All right, so another day on the Mustang here. Um, what we're gonna be doing today is, as you can see, the engine's in, transmission's in. We're gonna be pulling this water pump off, putting our new water pump on. Uh, we're just mocking everything up, so no gaskets, it's just gonna go on, because the new water pump is from a different engine. The outlet's in a little bit different spot, so we're gonna get the new water pump on, uh, get all of our accessories back on, alternator power steering pump, and start making up lines for those. All right, so all the accessories are on the engine, alternator, power string pump, everything's mounted. Uh, I went ahead and attached the upper radiator hose. The Ford one does fit, but it was way too big for the uh, water pump. So this is actually the Chevy hose off of a 2005 Suburban. Cut this end short. That's to the radiator. That's to the upper hose. I still gotta figure out the lower hose. Gotta extend it and come around to this side. Power steering pump return line, the low pressure line. I cut off the Ford one here and just put a soft line for the hose clamp there and hose clamp here. This is how the factory Chevy side is anyway, so it should be fine. Alrighty, so um, because I decided to remove the swap plate from this side, that took out a quarter inch and it actually made the engine sit just a tiny bit lower. And the oil pan is just a little bit too close to the steering rack for my liking. As you can see, well you can't really see, you can see better on the lift, but I have it jacked up right now, but it was just barely clearing the steering rack. So what I'm doing to get around that is I've jacked the engine up and I'm just stacking top of the motor mounts here two washers as a spacer that uh, the thread is plenty long on that motor mount bolt so drop it back down that should move each side up about a quarter inch give me another quarter inch so there should be about a half inch between the bottom of the oil pan and steering rack and we'll get that all set where it needs to be height wise on the engine and then we'll get this back in the lift and make up a transmission cross member mount um, and then that'll set our driveline angle. We'll make the rear end match and then everything should be good All right, so spacers are in as you can see right there. There's a little gap on the motor mount bolts nuts on still plenty of threads there All the way through the nut other side same way And that should have gained us a little bit of clearance down here on the pan It's hard to see but we'll see it when we get back up in the lift All right, so we're into the car. Got the transmission up on the jack. You can see the clearance we have now with the spacers. Not a lot, but there's clearance there. Let's see if we can see. So, definitely not touching. Here is all the accessories on. Power steering pump, alternator. And now I'm working on transmission mount. So I got this transmission mount right here. And what I'm gonna do, this is the factory bolt locations here and here. We're going to take this aluminum, quarter inch aluminum plate, we're going to cut it, we're going to bolt it across. This doesn't sit flat, as you can see it's kind of angled that way. So we're going to take the flat bar, bolt it in across here, we're going to bend it so it angles up and then it'll bend down and back. And then we're going to gusset the bottom of it. I got some pieces of aluminum here, we'll put on the bottom as gussets to make it nice and strong. And we'll get working on that. All right, so starting to get the transmission cross member made here. I uh, got one side bolted into the factory bolts. The other side will bolt into the factory bolts over here. And now just bend it a little bit up. Then it's going to bend back down and then over and go flat. That way this angle will match this. It's pretty close, but it isn't exactly right. So we'll get it right and then get it bolted on. All righty, so went and notched this plate. So it can clear here on the transmission. We'll clean that up real nice. And I stuck it in a bearing press. As you can see, it matches the angle of the motor mount now. So it bends up here a little bit, goes up, and then bends back down. This is gonna sit flat on the frame of the car here. And we'll get two holes, I'll chop it off. And then it'll get mounted, and then I'll weld probably maybe, maybe one or maybe two gussets on the bottom of here, and we'll see. One should be fine. Weld a gusset on, drill the two holes for this mount, and Transmission cross member is done. All right, so we got our cross member all cleaned up here, bolted it in, everything lines up good. I got this gusset, 
big strong gusset I made here. We're gonna get that welded on, TIG welded on. Alright, so here it is, all welded up, should be plenty strong, uh, it's very hot, so we're going to let it cool down, and then it is ready for the final install into the car. Alright, transmission is fully mounted, everything lines up good, angle looks good, everything looks good, so now the next problem is the shifter, the Nissan shifter was like way back here, you can actually see where it was hitting the ceiling there. Um, so it needs to go like six inches forward. So my solution to that they do sell aftermarket shifters that move them up But they're like 300 bucks. So I figured I'd give it a shot for free Before I buy one. So here's the original u-joint and this piece right here used to have like six inches of pipe between them And I cut it out and just welded them together So that brought this about six inches forward that slides on here Has a little pin that holds it in place. Now. This is the original shifter bracket right here and it's way too long, so I'm gonna chop it, make it six inches shorter, bolt it back in, and we'll see what it does. If it doesn't work, I'll buy a shifter, but if it works, it works. So we'll see what it does. Chop this six inch shorter, weld it back up, put it on, see if it works. All right, so we got it cut, tacked together. We're gonna put it in the car, check it. If it's good, we'll weld it up. If not, we'll change it. Alrighty, so got it all welded up. It looks horrible because it's cast, but it should be plenty strong. It's very hot. And we're gonna go get it put on the car, get the shifter in, and then everything should be good and it should line up, but we'll see how it goes. All right, transmission's mounted, shifter is mounted, all four bolts are in. Here's the linkage. I got that uh, safety, or I guess that keeps it on the shaft there, that pin back in. There it is, there it is, lined up with the hole of the car, so just about right in the middle. So that's done. All right, so it's dark out, but I just want to show this is the shifter position in the car. So that's the factory shifter cut out in the floor there. As you can see, I took the shift knob off because this needs to come up a little bit, but we got first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and then if you push down for reverse lockout, you got reverse all the way over here. So it does work, everything works. All the gears are easy to shift into. Sorry about the light here. All the gears are easy to shift into, and everything works.